as we spoke of yesterday, and we went through all the, all the steps of the scientific method, let's go ahead and do an example, and then I'm going to set up, set you up with an actual uh, scenario, and then you and small groups are actually going to design an experiment, and you're going to get up to the front of the room and present that experiment today. All of it today it should be quick. Your te this is a practice test. This is a practice test that you get to do in a group. All right. Here we go. So, to review the example we used in class. So there was a picnic. The scenario was there was a picnic. Is it okay? So a picnic, if you had a picnic and you got uh, a bunch of people eating uh, various foods and you suspect the ribs made everyone sick picnic people got sick uh, was it the ribs or the potato salad So you can, you can come up with a bunch of different tests, a bunch of different experiments with that. There's a bunch of right answers, a bunch of right answers. The, what's going what's gonna to determine if you get points or not is not how you do it, but whether you're following the scientific method or not. It's not whether what your conclusion is. I don't care if it's the ribs or the potato salad. Not really, not in this example. What I'm, what I'm caring about is that you are using logic, that you are following the scientific method, and then that you follow through with all the steps, and that they flow. We're gonna look, I'm going to be looking for a claim, something you're going to say. You're going to say something. I don't know what that is. You're going to have... Evidence. You're looking. I'm looking for evidence that supports the claim. Claim, evidence, and reasoning. You have to have the three. They have to flow. Whatever your claim is, your evidence must support the claim. Whatever your reasoning, it has to be related to the claim and the evidence so it all have three have to be together. If they're not, if you don't have the three working together to prove your point, then you you failed the assignment. You failed the the test. So the the objective is to make sure that your claim, your evidence, and your reasoning all are related and they support each other. Don't tell me I claim the sky is red, and then as evidence I say the sky is blue. And my reasoning is red is the same as blue. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't flow. It's not logical. In fact, you contradicted yourself. Believe it or not, this is a real problem for kids all the way through college. They don't make a claim. They don't collect evidence to support that claim and they don't have reasoning to support that's supported by the evidence. All right, so if I think it's the ribs and I wanna test and see if it's the ribs, that's my question, is it the ribs? That's what we've been working on all yesterday. So I make a hypothesis based on uh, my research, I asked the question that my research shows that it's E. coli, that people are sick because of E. coli. So then my question is, uh, could the ribs have had E. coli on them? So my hypothesis is if the ribs have E. coli, 
then uh, at what let's say 100 per 100 units uh, you know what let's just say 100 colonies per milliliter if I have that many coli then the ribs were what made everybody sick So there you go. That's an if-then statement. I'm going to review if the ribs have E. coli at this concentration, then the ribs were what made everyone sick. All right. So that's my hypothesis. So the experiment, I have to design an experiment to come with an independent variable and dependent variable. So let's do the experiment. So I have the ribs. I have to grow enough E. coli. I have to take a sample and grow the E. coli on a Petri dish and try to find, if I find it on a Petri dish and when I, and I smear something on a Petri dish, when I smear it, after a minute, after some time in an incubator, and with time, they grow, the, the colonies will be more and more apparent. The colonies are going to look like this. There's going to be little dots. You'll actually be able to see the colonies with your bare eyes. You'll be able to count them. If, there, if I put a milliliter of the, of the fluid from the ribs on the, the, the rib fluid on the Petri dish, and I get 100 colonies, then I'm going to say that's what made them sick. And I got that number from my research. Now, I made that up. That's a made-up number just because I wanted to make this example work. The example I'm about to give you is going to be much simpler. You're not going to have to make things up, okay? So the experiment then, your experiment is going to be, uh, uh, I have to, what variables am I controlling? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to control the temperature. So I keep the temperature the same. Uh, the amount of liquids used, amount of liquid used is going to be the same. Is that M? Yeah. Oh, I should put I am. Variables I am controlling. Temperature, amount of liquids. Uh, all equipment is going to be the same. Humidity, light, exposure to lights, all going to be the same. There's not, none of this is going to change. What is going to be the the thing I'm going to change, the independent variable. The independent variable might be the time. The time I allow for incubation. of the fluid. Do you understand this word incubation? In incubation means that you, sit, you let it sit in ideal conditions and you let them grow. You can let them grow. Incubation is, a, is you allow something to grow or develop. So I'm going to have these test tubes. They're all good tests. are going to be the same. And they're all going to be examples of fluids from the ribs. They're all going to go, the same amount of fluid is going to go in each of the test tubes. 
And this one, I'm going to let it incubate for one hour. And this one, I'm going to incubate for two hours. And this one, I'm going to incubate for three hours. And this one, I'm going to incubate for four hours. Just so I can get enough, enough bacteria so I can plate them and see if, if I get, if I have E. coli on them. I need enough to test. Okay. So that's my independent variable is the time. The time I allow for the E. coli to grow. My dependent variable is going to be what? What do I expect to change that's going to change because I allow them to sit in the, in the incubator for more time? The temperature, we said we're going to keep the same. Notice it here. Temperature is the same. Amount of fluids is the same. All the equipment is the same. Humidity is the same. Lights is the same. What's going to change because I, what do I expect is going to change when I put that rib juice in those test tubes and then put them in an incubator? What's going to change if I leave them in for an hour, two hours, three hours, or four hours? Say what? The way they look, that's true, but it's how many bacteria start to grow. How many bacteria? Well, the way they look is not a bad answer, but what's going to change is the an amount of bacteria, the number of bacteria will change. Okay? Are we all good? Now, we have, we need a control group. We need two groups. We need a positive and a negative control. That's going to allow us to compare, because let's say bacteria doesn't grow at all. Well, let's say bacteria does grow. How do we know anything about what this should look like? Whatever we put on this plate after those hours, whatever we allow to grow over these four hours, how do we know that that's what's going to make them sick versus it's not going to make them sick? All I know is I have bacteria on the plate. I don't know how many bacteria is actually going to make someone sick, right? Correct? So I need a positive control. So I get a sample of liquid with, that literally has the 100 colonies per milliliter. I have the, a test tube that has, that's cloudy already, that has the bacteria, has the bacteria at the concentration that makes people sick. Okay? It's there. Then I put it on a plate and I get my 100 colonies. So if, if my test groups look like this, then they're positive for the for the sickening level of bacteria. Okay? Does that make sense? If I didn't if I didn't and I have four plates, if I have my test groups, here's 1 hour, here's 2 hours, here's 3 hours, here's 4 hours. If I just did the one, two, three, four, and I had this, 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 and this, how do I know? How do I know that 
that any of these would make them sick if I didn't have something that was positive that definitely would make someone sick. Then I take a negative control. A negative group is again a test tube, but now I know that has just rib juice, no bacteria growing in it. Will not make people sick. Same rib juice from different set of ribs, obviously, that has no bacteria on it for sure. I take this, everything else is the same, and I plate that, those bacteria on a plate, and then that's what negative looks like. So negative looks like that, positive looks like this. And then this is gonna tell me how long it would have taken to get to the point where it gets, makes people sick. Because this is what makes people sick. This is absolutely no bacteria. These are my two control groups. One's negative, the other's positive. And now I can compare my experimental groups to these two groups. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, could you focus on what's gonna be in the test? Are we all good? Sorry, but it's like I'm trying to get you guys focused on, we have no time left. The class is gonna be over soon. We have a test on Tuesday. I need to give you time to do work out your practice tests. I mean, come on. So positive and negative, four hours, compare your experimental group to your control groups. Are we good? Okay, I apologize. Can we, can we move on? All right, thank you. So we have a table. We create a table and we say one hour, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. This is data. And maybe we even have a zero hour. Maybe we, we go ahead and add a zero hour to it. So we have four. I put a zero through my slashes so you notice the difference between. Okay, so for my control group, my positive control, after zero hours, I start with five colonies. After one hour, I end up with, uh, with t uh, I don't know, I'm making this up. I should, I should be more accurate with this, but let's say 25. Uh, after, after two hours, I end up with uh, 50. After three hours, I end up with 250. After four hours, I end up with 500 colonies. It would be much more than that, but I'm just going to go ahead and just say that. Negative control, uh, zero, 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 zero. No E. coli on that at all. My test groups, uh, after, after zero hours, I had maybe one colony. After one hour, I had tw uh, 20 colonies. After two hours, I had... 45 colonies. After three hours, I had 100 colonies. After four hours, I had 250 colonies. So that's my, that's my, these are my ribs. This is my data. And I could, I could then graph the data. I could put on the independent variable, I would put time. On the dependent variable, I would put number of Colonies, time in hours, I put time, incubation time, first number of colonies, and then I have four hours, one, two, three, four, and of course there's zero. I have two, I have three lines because I have three, I have the uh, positive control, the positive control, uh, let's say, say five, 
10, uh, no, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, uh, sorry, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, uh, da, 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 da. I get to go up by 50s. Say this is 100, then that's uh, whatever, 200, and that's something like here is 300, and this is 400, and this is 500. And um, the scale doesn't work because I have to sketch this out. So then we're looking at this as the positive control, and at the positive control, I start marking. It, it starts at five, at zero is five, and then uh, we go up to 25 after one hour, and then we go up to 50 after two hours, and then we go up to 250 after three hours, and then, uh, then after four hours, we're at 500. And so the line, the best fit line kind of looks like this for, uh, for the bacterial growth at the positive control. Oops, see. And then when I look at the negative control, uh, the negative control, uh, I start at zero and then I end at zero and no matter how many hours I let it incubate, that does not change. Then what I get when I do my test group, I look at see, uh, and my test groups are one, I start here around one, and then we're up at 20, and then we're up at 45, and then we're up at, uh, at 100, and then it's up, up to 250. So my test group looks something like, you know, best fit line, like that. So those are my three lines. So now, what's the likelihood that the ribs cause the disease, cause people to get sick? I like to, when I do a graph, I like to annotate it. So this would be uh, the test group. The ribs. And this would be the negative control. This is called annotating. So I'm annotating the graph so I see where the, everything is. And this one over here is the positive control. So this would definitely make people sick. This would definitely not make anyone sick, at least not from an infection. So what do you think? Was it the ribs? Yes or no? It's likely it would be, right? But to be definitive, what might we want to do? Might want to test a potato salad. Do the same experiment with potato salad now and see if the potato salad has the same kind of, what if the potato salad had the line, the potato salad test group, again, to be the positive, to be the negative. What if the potato salad group was up here? Then it could have, more likely, it was a potato salad. What if, the, what if the potato salad was down here, or even the same as negative? Then, the, then we're still back to the ribs do, did cause the disease, the illness. So that is how you design the experiment, okay? Just walking you through it. Is it time to go? Yes. All right, I'm gonna send you on, Ju on Schoology, I'll post a practice test uh, for you to do or not on your own. I walked you through, right? This, uh, then if you have any questions, you can ask me on Monday. Your test is on Tuesday. We have the meeting right Say what now? I don't remember. What does the schedule say? Does anybody have a, uh, there? Oh, you, don't, you don't have your computer, so. Graph on a test, if you can, annotate it. Add to it, write on it. Because it helps you keep track of all these lines and dots and bars, and you can think about what the relationship is between these three things. So yeah, we really can't tell for sure one way or the other. You can say yes or no and defend it. How am I going to grade you? I'm going to grade you whether, you ch whether you're defending it correctly or not. As long as you're using the evidence to support your claim, remember what we said in the beginning, claim, you're making a claim, yes or no. Evidence, you're using the evidence that you have to support you. And reasoning, your reasoning is based on the evidence. 
whatever it is that you're saying, the reason why you're saying yes or no is based on the evidence. So I'm, that's what I'm looking for. And what would you do next is right. You would test a potato salad. You would test the potato. Instead of the ribs, you do exactly the same thing you just did. All the same groups, except this is going to be the potato salad. There's only one of the two. You, you figured out by process of elimination, it was definitely one of the two. And what if your test results were for the potato salad? Weren't that, but were actually this. What would you say then? That, that it was the, the ribs for sure, right? What's that white line on the second graph? That white line on the second graph is your, is your test groups. For potato salad. And if the, if the potato salad, I mean, I think it's obvious if it's one of these two, most of us, now that we have the full experiment, most of us would pick it was the ribs and not the potato salad. But before, without doing that second experiment, we could have guessed either way and found justification. All right, so that's kind of like, you know, the stuff that you, we do in science, right? That is the, what we do in science. And so you're, what I'd like you to do, I don't think, we have enough time, I think, at least to start it, is I'm going to set you up with a, an experiment now, a scenario, then you're going to design an experiment in small groups, and then you're going to, uh, at least one group is going to be able to present it. I don't think everybody's going to be able to present it. I wanted everybody to present it, but we just don't have time. So your scenario is the following. You are growing a plant in uh, in a lab under lab conditions, and the plant. Uh, You're testing different groups. The whole point was to try to test different groups for uh, different fertilizers. But you notice that some of the plants had more or more had more exposure to light than others. And so some of the plants were smaller. And some were larger. So the ones that were, the, what you noticed was that the ones that grew in less light were smaller. that grew in less light were smaller. So design an experiment in small groups that would determine if the amount of sunlight would impact the amount of growth. It's an easy, easy, right? Go ahead and do it in small groups.